Hello, my name is Kambi Sanani and today we're going to talk about the bones of the low back or the lumbar anatomy. Here I have an example of an x-ray looking at the lumbar spine. We can see the vertebral bodies, the area where the discs are expected as well as the spinous processes. We can show that a little bit better on this three-dimensional view of the spine. Here is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth lumbar vertebrae. These are the holes we were talking about where the nerves come out called the foramina. And here as we turn the spine over we can see the facet joints which are the joints sitting on the back of the spine and the spinous processes which is the bony elements we feel when we touch our own backs. As we turn over to the other side, we can again see the foramina. And finally, we can actually see the vertebral bodies from the front. On this x-ray, we can see the fifth, fourth, third, second, first vertebrae, the foramina as they come through here, as well as the spinous processes back here. On the front view of the spine, we can see how nicely the spine is straight up and down. And we can see the hip bones as they come across. Although x-rays are helpful, MRI is really the diagnostic tool we use to better visualize the soft tissues in the spine. Here is a fifth, fourth, third, second, first lumbar vertebrae. These are the discs in between and we can see them pretty nicely here. We can see the spinal fluid here as it comes down and protects all the nerves. We can see the nerves. Here this is essentially a normal MRI. On the other hand, here we have the fifth, fourth, third, second, first vertebrae. We can see the discs looking pretty reasonably good on these views. However, the disc between the L4 and 5 looks dark compared to the well hydrated remaining discs. This is what we use to determine if there is degeneration of this disc. Furthermore, we can see that the fluid in the spine comes down pretty nicely here until it again hits this L4-5 disc space where a large disc has come out and is really pushing on the nerve structures and the spinal fluid which is likely causing a lot of back and leg pain in this individual. X-rays can actually help us a little bit more if you're looking for alignment problems. We can see the lumbar spine here nicely aligned, however as we get to the sacrum we can see there's a huge shift of the spine pushed forward. This whole area should be back up here so that it's a nice continuous element here. The other way we can look at the spine is to look at it from the frontal view here. We can see instead of the spine being straight up and down, it's got a large curvature which we call scoliosis. When the spine has slipped forward as it has here, we call this spondylolisthesis. We have some x-rays here of a patient who has had surgery by us. We can see the disc spaces being empty here. And then we can see these two disc spaces have a piece of bone in them, which is what we have done from the front to try to fuse these segments and then we can see these screws going in and holding the whole structure stable here. This is a frontal view, view again showing us the screws and the bone graph sitting in the middle of the spine. In summary we have seen the lumbar spine x-ray where things line up pretty nicely. We have seen it when things are not lining up well and we have a spondylolisthesis with the bone falling forward. We have seen the frontal view showing us a big curvature, which is scoliosis. We have seen a very large disc herniation, as we can see here, coming over and pushing on this nerve as it's being pushed back, likely causing significant back and leg pain. And we have seen normal discs versus degenerated discs, which have lost their luster or the fluid within them. And finally, we have seen what the spine looks like after instrumentation and effusion has taken place. This completes our discussion today, and thank you for joining us.